the housings for the counterbalancer are in place, uh, welded on the crankcase like this. And as we left about one millimeter uh, on the radial here, we could, uh, we had to do one uh, additional machining to get the um, tolerance we need for the bearings and to make sure that they, these are properly aligned with the CC between the main bearing and the balancer bearing to make a proper fit with the toothed gear. So next step now is to put uh, these uh, bearings in place. Also a gasket here. As you also can see I've put in the rubberized uh, engine mount here. This is um, a material looking like this. It's rather tough. It's uh, 92 shores. Uh, so we'll see how much this absorbs. Um, there is a steel bushing with a, a washer here going straight through. Also with a Teflon uh, washer. So I will put an um, engine mount straight through here and um, place these here and then you will have the frame coming down welded onto it like that. So let's get things assembled. Now the bearing is in place here for the balance shaft and also the ceiling here on the other side. Uh, this will prevent any oil from coming out from the crank case uh, as this uh, space here is supposed to be dry. So now we can fit the actual balance shaft. The balance shaft is looking like this. Um, ordinary design I would say but I need a lot of uh, imbalance on this one so I had to put uh, tungsten inserts. This is an alloy um, of 10% copper. Normal steel has a density of 7.8 and this alloy has a density of some 16.2 so it's more than twice the density of steel. And these inserts are also press fit and they are secured with a locking screw. So it's uh, coming down like that. I've also drilled a small notch in uh, the insert to make sure that the locking screw uh, actually locks very well. And this also with Loctite of course. Everything to prevent this insert from coming out of place because if it did it would be mayhem. And this will be fitted uh, into here, like that. And it will be geared on the other side by a toothed gear and it's uh, turning in the opposite uh, rotation as the crank, like this. And uh, it will be in uh, 9000 RPMs doing its uh, job, I hope. But it will be uh, really interesting to see how it works. Now I have assembled the crankshaft and the counterbalancer and it's time to figure out how to position these both actually. Uh, as you see there is uh, not so much space to, um, to play around with. Uh, we are talking about um, maybe half a meter, half a millimeter on either side as clearance between the counterbalancer and uh, the crank cheeks. So this is an operation that uh, needs to be done in the same manner as hedgehogs are mating very carefully. With uh, the counterbalancer here, uh, there is no use for these two engine mounts that uh, was used previously in the OEM engine. So the new is up here. So that means that um, these two have to go and uh, the tubes down here have to be replaced with uh, something else. So uh, no matter how fond I am over this frame, I have to do something with this one. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. 